Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to Bugbears and Brews. I'm Brian, if you don't know me, and I figured it's Friday night, my wife isn't home, I'm going to have myself a beer, and if I'm going to have a beer, why not talk about the beer I'm going to have, because the beer I'm going to open is actually one of my favorite beers, uh, types to begin with, and the one one of my favorite brews that we've, my dad and I have ever brewed. Uh, so tonight, I'm going to be drinking a Gosa beer, which Gosas are typically... Uh, I shouldn't say typically, they're sour beers. Uh, they're typically done with wild yeast. Ours we did not do with wild yeast just because you do wild yeast with home brewing. You got to get into like some serious sanitation stuff. And a lot of people actually do second um, equipment sets for wild yeast. Uh, and that's just a little bit more than what we'd like to get into it. So you can replicate some of that wild yeast flavors with uh, acid malts, which is what we did. Um, so for those that don't know Gosa's, like I said, it's a farmhouse ale. So this is stuff that like the um, farmers drank back in the day. Uh, this is typically from the German region, for if I recall correctly. Um, not a lot of hoppiness to these guys to begin with. Um, and that, that comes through even in ours here. Um, there's it's a, it's a little spiced beer. There's some coriander, that kind of good stuff in it. It, it's it's a, just beer that's not not really well known. I know there's some that are coming out on the market recently. I say recently, but I, I, they come out on the market, and I've noticed them more now that I've you know we've brewed this a couple times. I think this is the fourth time that we brewed the Gosa. Um, out of the ones that I've tried, though, honestly, this is I know it's like hey, this is my baby. I like it. I like ours the best. I, I think a lot of the ones that are done. Um, with large productions, they are, they try to get like, I, there's this one that, uh, I don't remember if it's New Belgium that does it. There, there's a Gosa that's kind of like this watermelony flavor type deal that I just, I couldn't get behind. There was a Gosa with agave nectar. I forget who did that one. Um, out of all the Gosas I tried, the Holy Gosa um, was probably my favorite commercial one. That being said though, I would still would take mine any day of the year over any of the other ones. Um, the sour flavor in it is just a little different in ours and I, I'm guessing that's attributed to acid malts, although I, I would imagine that brewers, mass brewer productions wouldn't use wild yeast. I would think there's probably some regulations there and that kind of stuff. So I'm guessing they probably do acid malts as well, but their balance just seems to be a little bit differently than what I like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open this bad boy and drink it. Uh, I, let's see here. I forget the actual brew or the ABV on this guy. Let's see here. This was before I started putting the ABVs up top. I say me, but it is my dad that always did it because he's the one that prints the labels. Uh, just shy of five, so four and a quarter is what it looks like. Or sorry, four and three quarters. Um, we did brew this this time last year uh, during... The uh, Adventures of the Home Brewing, they do a, hey, come outside and brew with us. And we're invited to brew with them last year, and this is what we brewed for it. So, got, ooh. And for some reason, it was a little overcarbonated. I just wonder if maybe it was it sat for so long or something like that, it built up some extra carbonation. Because normally, I don't have this issue with Gosa's. So we're going to pour this and we're just going to let it sit for a little bit. That's yeah, ugly. Uh, yeah, very sedimenty in there. So um, yeah, I'm guessing we had some extra yeast activity during the uh, the year. Um, I tend to store these in my garage. I know that's not the best place, but um, our spare room right now is in the process of getting cleaned up. and So I don't uh, have the room in the spare room to do. I do keep the meats in the spare room, though just because they're a little bit more delicate than beers. So I'm guessing the warmer summer that we had here in Michigan kind of caused that to occur. So there's the beer. Like I said, it's overcarbonated. Um, like I said, I'm guessing that's due to the summer heat that we had and me storm in the garage. So that's, you know, shame on me. So with the Gosa that um, my dad and I make, it's a, it's Adventures of Home Brewing. It's a company here in Michigan. Um, it's their recipe. We did alter it a little bit, uh, kicked up the coriander a little bit just because 
we like the spiciness of it and we uh, and we added a little bit more of the sea salt so with this one here with their the way that they did it you get a lot of I would describe it almost as a margarita flavor um, a little bit of that like basic margarita tartness which gives you that nice and you have that nice little salty finish to it that just makes you want to take another drink immediately it, it's a really interesting beer and anybody that we've had try it loves it um, even my wife who hates beer loves Gosa's and that's why I don't drink them that often is is I don't I shouldn't say I don't drink them that often as I don't drink it as often as I would like because typically whenever we do a, a batch of Gosa we save a better part of it for her just because it is something that she can get behind and it's not ciders or something like that so like I said it's very sedimenty I don't think we can is it gonna focus on it Oh, there it goes. You can see a little bit of sediment going on. Um, like I said, there was some extra yeast action in the bottle, and I'm guessing that's due to the heat. But if you never had a Gosa, I would highly suggest you try one. If you're going to do a commercial one, which is, you know, if you're going to try one to begin with, you'd probably do the commercial one, and I would look out for the Holy Ghost. I forget who brews that one, but it's uh, probably my preferable one of it. That one... The tartness to me seemed a little bit more lemony, where this one's a bit more like margarita esque. It still had a little bit of the salt finish, but the coriander was definitely not as strong as what I'd like. It, um, but it still is very farmhousey uh, ale. So if you like farmhouse ales, go up that route. If you never tried a sour, definitely try a Gosa to begin with. Um, but do be careful which ones you get, because like I said, some of them just they don't represent what I think should be a Gosa. Don't get a Gosa, a Gosa with. A gosa with agave, a gosa with a side flavor. Don't mess with that. Just get a straight, normal gosa and um, just give it a try because it's just a really different beer that's not well known. Um, I, like I said, I think it's kind of finding a niche crowd now, but that's it's still saddens me that it's not as well widespread as it, uh, I'd like it to be just because it's just such a good beer. Um, the hops on this guy... When we did the brew, we did stick with the Santium, um, and we did go with the Kolsch Ale Yeast from White Labs, which probably explains a little bit more of the sediment, because for some reason that uh, yeast always seems to give us a little extra sedimenty goodness. I say goodness, but we know it's not really goodness, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to go back and enjoy my Gosa, and maybe watch a movie, play some video games, who knows? Uh, sky's the limit, but you know, gladly let me know if you ever had a Goso or if you don't or never had one. Uh, I can probably suggest a couple of companies. I probably tried 10 ish different market Gosas. Um, like I said, they're, they're kind of hard to find, but if you look for them and you try to find them, you can eventually find them. Uh, and I can, if you give me a list and say, hey, here's the ones that I have available near me, which ones would you suggest? I can tell you which ones, at least from my preference, I liked. And the reasons behind that. So uh, yeah, go out there, try Gosa. It is definitely a. You know, I will say, a lot of people are going to call it Ghosts, and I've talked to other people that are uh, from Germany. My dad used to do a lot of travel in Germany uh, back in the late '90s, and he says proper pronunciation is Gosa. So I'm sticking with that. Uh, you know, going with the people that speak the language, right? But yeah, uh, go out there, try one, and I think you're going to love it. Cheers.